So a great way to improve your ability to see the scales and also play the scales it's a good idea to go through sequences. Now you've probably seen a lot of the more common sequences like thirds, groups of four, groups of three, and so on. And all those are really great to practice, of course. But another thing that's kind of overlooked is doing slightly longer sequences. Because these sequences, they're basically, well, in terms of the intervals here with the thirds, that's the sequence because then you just restart that from each uh, scale degree. So going one, three, two, four, three, five, and so on. Uh, and the groups of four, basically that, and then, then you're done. But I like to make some longer sequences as well because it helps to keep my focus up and also you can make them slightly more melodic. Now this type of practice is not necessarily to get these sequences up to any ridiculous speed, but when you practice these and really focus on the accuracy, you'll find that your overall technique just feels better and eventually you will also be able to play faster without even having to try to push anything. Uh, so I really like working with these longer sequences because of that reason. You, you help your technique, but you also help your focus and you also see the scales way better because you kind of have to do that to be able to get through these without uh, screwing up basically. So if we just try this on the C major scale here. So three notes per string. And you can apply this to the, the cage system as well, even though I don't like the cage system personally, but a scale sequence, what's good about that is that it's just a, a, a sequence of numbers, basically. So the fingering is going to be up to what you like to, to practice. So that's why they're so helpful as well, because they work in a lot of different contexts. So the sequence that I want to show you today is an eight note sequence, and it goes like this. And so on. I'm going to play through the entire thing soon, but I want to show you what I'm actually doing here. So the good thing about doing this with three notes per string scales is that once you've done each of these starting points, it's going to be the same picking for each of the sets of strings. So then this sequence uh, goes like this. We have basically start with thirds. Right, so we got one, two, three, four, and then the last part of the sequence, the last half, will be this. You can technically see this as a third as well, but I just see it as like a, a kind of a sequence. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And what I just did now is a good thing to do to get used to this initially, instead of just trying to get through it right away. Uh, so you can get used to sort of the, the, the way that it should look and feel uh, from starting from each of these notes. So the first pattern then would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's do the starting with a downstroke, uh, alternate picking. Of course, you should try it with an upstroke as well. But uh, then the next uh, section here starts from this note. So we go same sequence, same uh, intervals moving around, but we are starting the second scale degree. So, so you see this setup between the strings is a bit different. So, so far we got. And then the last one will be. And this one is the trickiest one because you actually have to use three strings overall. So. Right? And then, like I said, when you restart here, you're going to get the same number of notes per string. You just need to adhere to the whatever the fingering for the, that particular scale is. So. Continue on to the D string. Now we get to the B string. Uh, we, we run into some issues here because 
you need to do that. Not really issues, but a lot of people are not really comfortable doing that, but I think it's a very important technique for the instrument. So if you absolutely want to, you know, refinger that, do that, but I, I would suggest that you get used to doing this because there's certain arpeggios that you, you basically can't play them if you don't do the barring, so get used to that. Uh, So basically we got this one, uh, and now we start on the G string and now the, a lot of barring ensues here. And uh, that one is actually good if you just want to work on your barring technique. So. And a tip here is to make sure that you find the perfect spot to bar here by barring the lowest string in a, a bar. Whether that's like, you know, three string bar or whatever, it doesn't matter because as long as you fret this one normally and do that, you can get a feel for where you should be uh, if you go the other dire direction, which we'll do soon. So you don't want to, uh, you know, I think what a lot of people get into trouble with barring is because they, they never get any consistency. They sort of overshoot it a lot. Uh, so if you can find the actual spot and then do that every time, your brain will just get it and will feel wrong to do it any other way. So anyway, so we have this. And then the last one from starting from the G string. Then we have the starting on the B string. Whoops. And this is will be the last one. Because remember, when you start on the last note of a uh, three note per string scale, you need three strings to complete the sequence, and we don't have that. So we're just gonna stop here. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But that's good. Now we're set up to start the, the descending version. All right, so descending, we got this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then the second one. And actually these repeating patterns are trickier in some cases because you need to go back to the, the wrong note, so to speak. Uh, so when you do this, that's easier to do, I think, than have to go there. And especially when you come to this one, much uh, more comfortable to go and this last one might be particularly tricky if you're not used to the barring because barring from the high string or a thin string to a thick string is you know very dependent upon a good placement of your finger like I talked about before but the way to find that again is to play the lowest string of that bar do the bar and then sort of snap the string a bit so you can get a feeling for where on the fingertip you need to be for it to be a perfect bar. And then you try to do that every time to build a habit. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if you put all of them together, Now I'm going to show you the uh, B and D, uh, G and B string as well because that's quite a kind of tricky one, uh, either direction. So we got this. This one. And I think... When you just repeat it like that, you can just go, go back to the third finger. Uh, but when you do it in the actual sequence, you're going there. So again, that's going to be easier. Uh, okay, so the last one here would be... Uh, and connect all three.
Yeah. And then it's just the same thing as before. But the last one here as well, if you want to loop, you know, make a seamless loop over the whole thing, you have to go. So basically you're gonna do this one will be the last one. And then you restart it here. So if I put the whole thing together once, you can see what it should sound like. And like I said, find a tempo where you make absolutely no mistakes. No, you know, strings ringing that shouldn't be ringing. So that might be way slower than you want to play, but that's gonna bring, bring you the best results in uh, terms of your overall technique. So I actually flubbed a note a little bit in the middle here. So I actually practice this slower than I did here. And I really focus on the transition time, really going. And some people might think that's really boring to do, but I don't think it is because you can really focus on all the technical aspects of what I'm doing and making sure I get a really good sound. Uh, and that's a challenge in itself, instead of just half-assing stuff and just rushing through it and, you know, then it's kind of pointless to do. It's kind of going to the gym and doing really bad reps. You might get some benefit out of it, but by spending the same amount of time and doing good reps, you would get way more out of it in the long run. Back in the day, I used to have real issues with fast alternate picking when it came to two notes per string. I was fine with three notes per string, but the two notes per string thing was a bit harder to, to crack. So if you struggle with fast alternate picking as well, and you don't know what to practice or for how long, I've created the perfect solution for you in the form of the Pentatonic Picking Power Book. So in this book, you'll find a daily workout that will not only help your pentatonic picking, but will also upgrade your overall alternate picking technique. So it contains basically the same exercises I used myself to develop my picking abilities, as well as numerous students over the years that I've given the same exercise to with great results. So I know these exercises work as long as you put in the work. So it's not a quick solution or quick fix. It will still take a lot of work, but at least you have a very easy to follow routine. So if you're up for a big alternate picking upgrade in 2024, I cannot think of a better start.